friends. Today, in this second chapter of the beginner's informations, we deal with the left hand only. We don't need the bow, we play pizzicato instead. We'll have a look at the neck positions where we use the four fingers. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. Our cello is tuned in fifth. We have the open strings C, G, D, and A. By putting the fingers on the strings, we shorten it and by that we get higher pitches. In order to play a scale or any piece of music, we have to shorten the strings at certain points. Our musical system knows whole tones and half tones. We are in the fortunate situation that the natural distance between our fingers is more or less exactly the distance between a note and the next half tone. Try to hold your hand as natural as possible. Your wrist is relatively straight and the fingers you put on the right side of the string. Don't put them directly on the string. A little bit on the right side. Your thumb is depending on its length behind your first and second finger and it touches the neck gently. Do not press. Never with your thumb against the neck. Now we have the tone and the next finger, as I said, plays a half tone higher. Here we have E and F. The next finger is again a half tone higher, F, F sharp, and the next finger again a half tone higher, F sharp, G. If we omit one finger, we play whole tones, E, F sharp, or F, G. If we play just one four, E, G, then we have a minor third. Our scales, major or minor scales, consist of combinations of whole tones and half tones. Let us start working on a major scale. A major scale consists of two identically built groups of four notes, two tetrachords. They are very easy to perform on our instrument. You have the open string, the C. Then you have a whole tone, another whole tone, and a half tone. And then the same thing, same pattern, on the G string too. Open string, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. Altogether, here is your major scale. In this case, C major. I tell you the notes. It is C, D, E, F. Now, G, A, B, C. Now you do the same thing starting on G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and that is your G major scale. And finally you start on the D string, play D major, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, and back. Now you are able to play easy uh, songs. Maybe you know that. The scales I just played in the so-called first position. The system of the numbered positions is understandable but 
not absolutely logical. It has confusing parts too. I only use it in order to give these things a name for now. I highly recommend though that you try to learn where you are and which node you are playing. Plus, what nodes are in the neighborhood of the playing finger. From the very beginning, you should put much effort in learning your fingerboard. Okay, we played a scale in one octave. Now, let's see what we need to do in order to play a scale, a C major scale, in two octaves. We know the first octave, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And now the second octave goes C, D, E, now second finger, F, G, A, B, second finger again, and down. see what happens if you play G major in two octaves. We know the first octave already. And now the second octave. Down. Here we had our first change of positions. We went from the so-called first position to the fourth position on the A string. We can do the same thing with C major too. We just omit the A string and play up the D string. The first octave, the lower octave, we know. And now we just go up the D string and omit the A string. Here we have the change to the fourth position. Notice that the first finger in the fourth position is identical with the next higher open string. A on the G string, D, and on the C string, G. We have on each string 10 half steps from the open string to the end of the fourth position. Open string, first half step, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we practice the following exercises. We start on the first half step above the open string. Use a simple pattern, one, two, four, two, and go up the string by half steps. Look. Now you put the first finger where the second was. Again, 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 and again. Here we reached the so-called fourth position. For the way back, we use the pattern four, three, one, three. Look. Now we put the fourth finger there where the third was. started. Now we go up the string by whole tones. We use the pattern one, three, four, three. Put the first where the third was. Again and here we are again in our fourth position. For the way back we use 
Finally, we go up the string by minor thirds. One, two, three, four. And back. You should do that on all four strings and very often. Now you put your fingers on all thinkable notes up to the fourth position, the so-called fourth position. Never forget, you should always be aware of what note you are playing. To complete our first look at the left hand in neck positions, I need to mention the extended position. The closed position covers a minor third. The extended position covers a major third. You get to the extended position by stretching the first finger back half a step. The rest of the hand stays the same. The thumb stays there. The first finger moves back half a step. Close position, extended position, so that you have a major third. This enables us to play a lot more scales without shifting actually. For instance, D major, extended position, or A major. You should here too be aware of what notes you are playing. One example D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, e, or B flat major, B flat, C, D, E flat. I experienced that the systematic clarity in the approach of cello playing helps a lot. So either ask your pupils for developing this rather intellectual clarity or work yourself on it if you don't feel 100% certain here and there. Listening is not enough. You must know your fingerboard in and out. Play a G on the D string with the third finger without looking for it. Just put the finger there, you know where it is. That is what you have to accomplish. Blind and deaf security of your left hand. Have fun with it. See you soon. Take care and so long.